Ali Safian, doctor, I went to lose weight with metformin. I weighed 105 kilograms, five feet nine, 31 years old. For the latest in health-related information and ways to save your life, check out the newsletter. Metformin doesn't always work, but it helps a lot of people. I've got a lot of people that have taken it and have lost weight with it. There are new drugs that help even more so. They're very expensive though. They're called GLP ones like Ozempic. Because of what's happened with the Ozempic and GLP one revolution, I find myself saying this over and over and over again. I'm not necessarily a diet doc. That's not my thing. That's not what we do. We're cardiovascular. But Ozempic and the other GLP ones have just blasted away the cardiovascular outcome trials. CVOTs, cardiovascular outcome trials. What those do is they show that the FDA has finally caught on to the fact that we're less concerned about long-term diabetes impact for a diabetes drug. We're more concerned about cardiovascular outcomes for a diabetes drug. These GLP-1s are originally diabetes drugs and they are knocking it out of the park. They are in short what does that mean? They're saving lives from diabetes. Well, what's the most common thing, the biggest thing that would help in terms of diabetes? Losing body fat. So it's not a big surprise, but losing body fat's not the only way they had their impact. Metformin is basically one of the cheapest and safest yes. medications for that. And losing weight is one of the benefits, but it has other benefits related to glucose metabolism. And I think we talked about the news that happened last week or a couple of weeks back on the US. And I just saw one in Mexico as well about a shortage of Ozempic yes. on both the US and Mexico because people are getting those to lose weight. And I will say, if if you're having issues losing weight or you have some kilograms or pounds over the ones that you might need, you might probably have pre-diabetes and insulin resistance as well. Here, at least in Mexico, the point of view was, well, what is up with all these people that are taking important anti-diabetic medication for people who really need them? And I was like, maybe they need it too, but they need that and do other stuff. That's what they probably they're not doing because it's not just the medication. That's not going to solve the problem by itself. There are two points that you make that I think are really key. One is that concept of oh, you're keeping it away from diabetics that really need it. Are we sure that those people that are overweight are not diabetic? Because if they look through our lenses, if they did what we do for a living all day, every day, they wouldn't be nearly so concerned about that. It's like body weight, body fat, diabetes, pre-diabetes, and just over and over and over again. You start to get like Pavlov's dogs, you know, they ring the bell, they think of food. We see body fat, we think of diabetes and pre-diabetes. There was another kind that you made that was perhaps even more critical, and that is the number of patients that have come to us and they're on those drugs and maybe more, like at those and SGLT2s, and they're still maintaining their body weight. Lifestyle is king. If you don't change your lifestyle, no amount of drugs is gonna make a difference.